Welcome to another video from explainingcomputers.com. This time I'm going to investigate running Windows programs on Linux. Now to do this I'm going to look at a program called Wine which provides a kind of compatibility layer between a Windows program and the Linux operating system. It allows you to run a Windows executable and also to handle all those calls to Windows that will be made by the program but have to be, if you like, translated so they become calls to the Linux system. And in addition to looking at Wine itself, I'm going to look at some of its derivatives, a paid version of Wine effectively called Crossover, and also some sort of interfaces you can get make it slightly easier to use called Play on Linux and Wine Tricks. So, it seemed most appropriate to start this video on the website for Wine over at winehq.org where for over 20 years they've been working on this project to run Windows programs under Linux. Now to get Wine the most straightforward thing to do would be to go to your application manager in your particular distro. Here as you can see I'm running Linux Mint. So I could go to the, uh, what, the software manager here, ask me for a password of course because it's Linux and it loves to be secure. And then the uh, software manager would come up and we could just do a search for Wine. There we are. And it would show us Wine and related programs, utilities like Wine Tricks and Play on Linux, as we'll look at later. But if we just uh, click on Wine, and there it is, look, we could install it by just pressing Install here. One thing to note, though, is that you won't necessarily get the latest version that way. Here, it's what, October 2017, I've got an updated version of Linux Mint. It would give us version 1.6.2 of Wine, when the latest version is actually 2.0.2, I think it is. So you're better in many circumstances to go through a longer install process by going to the Wine website, going to download, and then finding the version that fits your, your distro, and then you would install that from this page which is a, a slightly more cumbersome process. So I'm not going to go through that in this video for all the installs. I'm going to assume you're going to be able to go through install routines for your particular distro. So what I'm going to do here is slightly radical. I'm going to do this. Yes, what I've done, I've switched distros. I'm now running Zorin OS, which is a very nice version of Linux, particularly for people who want to migrate from Windows to Linux, because it looks quite uh, Windows-like, as you'll see if we uh, bring up the menu. And as you might also have noticed here, it's got Wine pre-installed. Now, admittedly, several Linux distros have Wine pre-installed these days. It isn't always the most up-to-date version, as you'll find it is with Zorin. And you'll also find you've not just got Wine installed, you've also got the utilities Play on Linux and Wine Tricks, as we'll look at later. So if we look at uh, Configure Wine here, we'll bring that up. This is uh, an October 2017 version of uh, Zorin, at least downloaded in October 2017. And you'll see it's governor, say, Wine version 2.0.2, so only 0.01 off the latest version. I think I can forgive it that. And if you wish, you can configure all sorts of things here. Not least you can configure which version of Windows you want this to look like. I've got Windows 7 there, but you can set up things like Windows libraries, graphics setup. You can see how it's mapped drives and things. All this is available to play with if you need to. But most of the time, you should be able to just leave things on the default. The other thing you can do if we go to the Wine menu, as you can see, we've got uh, Browse Virtual C Drive. It's set up a virtual C Drive because, of course, Windows programs expect to find certain directories and files within them, and these are here. This is very familiar for, for Windows users, isn't it? Now, to test this out, in Downloads here, I've brought in some uh, program files from Windows. I've particularly brought across Notetab Lite by just literally copying across its folder. This is a small uh, editing package I use quite a bit. And I know this can be moved between machines without having to do an install, just literally taking all the files across. So if we go down here, you run Notetab from its uh, executable, notetab.exe. And with Wine installed, you could go to a terminal in Linux and type Wine, and then here, notetab.exe, the name of the file, and it would run. Or I can do a right click and go to a open with the Wine Windows program loader. And if we're lucky, this has just been copied across. Yes, it works. We've now got Notetab running, which is a great little package, gives you an opportunity to run lots and lots of tabs with different, uh, different, different code or HTML, whatever you want inside them. Anyway, that clearly works. Let's try something a bit more complicated. Let's go back. And I thought, well, if I run a graphical package, a 3D package, that might be a good thing to try. So Sculptress is a 3D sculpting package. It's actually the free version of a package called ZBrush. 
and uh, this is not the latest version, but it's a fairly recent version, and this is the install executable. So again, if I go to open with a Wine Windows program loader, this should now try to install Sculptris on the, uh, the Linux system using Wine. And uh, there we are, it's got to the, uh, that part of install shield. That's okay, we'll do next on that. And I'll accept the terms of the agreement. I apologize for the great gales blowing outside today. I'm competing with gales and fireworks on my sound, so hopefully you can hear me okay. We'll do a complete install. It's only a test and press on install. And, uh, oh, it's given me some um, icons on the desktop. It says it's finished. That seems very fast to have installed. I guess it is running on SSD, but even so, that seemed rather fast. I'll click on finish. Has that really done it? I'm, I'm a skeptic. Um, but if we look in under Wine there, yes, nothing's appeared under there yet, and it should have appeared under there if it had been installed. But uh, who knows? Let's try clicking that. It has, it's having a little think still. Oh, yes, it's in school sculptress. I shouldn't be so surprised, should I? This is this opens up in a uh, mode where you're just doing some very basic sculpting on this clay in, in the symmetrical mode. If I just move that around, you'll see we're just painting on virtual clay there and it seems, seems to work, doesn't it? We can build a strange looking thing. There we are, I can play with this for hours. There's all sorts of um, sculpting tools over here. We can flatten stuff out as well, there we are. And we can, uh, change materials, we could have something like, like a, that's a wacky material, isn't it? Or we could have a, a gold material. I can play with these other programs for hours, you know, and sometimes even do things that are worth doing. Anyway, I think we've proved that we've managed to run a, a 3D graphical package, initially at least running perfectly nicely on a Linux system using Wine. Right. I've now rebooted the system, and uh, if we look under the uh, menu in Wine there, you can see there's now an entry for Sculptris as should exist after you've installed an application under Wine. That said, we've still got the uh, desktop icon, which is very nice. I think we'll get rid of that icon there. Don't really need, need that one. But it doesn't always, I should say, go as well as it did for us installing Sculptris just then. So that's why there are utilities available to make Wine easier to use and to help you download software. And those are particularly Wine Tricks and Play On. Linux. So let's just have a quick look at those. Obviously, I can't look at all of their configurations and options because it depends on the programs you want to install. But if we look at uh, installing a program under Play on Linux, you will see there's all sorts of things you can install, accessories, development things, educational things, loads of games. It is, after all, called a Play on Linux. So you would expect there to be loads and 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 loads of games. And here they all are. You could install uh, whatever you wanted. Uh, all sorts of games are here that you could uh, potentially install. Um, Star Wars Jedi Knight 2 Jedi Outcast, for example, is there, which you could install. And there's even an option here for no CD required, which I'll just leave you to uh, ponder over. There's also lots of uh, graphical programs, scripts to help you install things like, like Photoshop, as we could see there. Um, internet things, you can install older versions of Internet Explorer and Safari and things for testing, multimedia programs, office programs, etc. But I thought we'd just try and install, say, uh, Google SketchUp, which is a, a drafting package. is isn't actually from Google anymore, it's from Trimble Navigation, but let's try and install it. That probably suggests it's an older version, but just want to show you the process. So we'll click on that and let it do its thing. And I will just keep skipping through these, selecting the, uh, the obvious option. And we'll select to download the program. And here we are in the standard uh, Windows installation wizard. Accept license terms, etc. There we are. Let's go into a virtual C drive, install. And there we are. Google SketchUp is now installed on the system. And it's given us a desktop icon, so we'll uh, launch from that. And uh, here we have a SketchUp. We need to choose a template, I think. Uh, that one will do and start using SketchUp. And it seems to be working. We can just uh, drag out some nicer areas from building or something, whatever it's gonna be. Put that one there. Doesn't really matter, Chris, it's only proving it works. And we can uh, elevate those sections. Whoa, this is gonna be a lovely building. Look, we've just uh, 
gone and covered a person up. That's probably illegal. And um, somewhere up here there must be the thing to uh, rotate around in the world. There it. There we are. So we've now um, proved we can run Google SketchUp. We can install it and run it using a Play on Linux. Right, having had a look at a Play on Linux, and we'll just close that down there, I thought we should also have a look at a similar Wine interface called a Wine Tricks. So this does a similar thing. It allows you to select software with install scripts already written for you to help you install the program. And you can control the, uh, the prefix here very much. The prefix for Wine is basically a folder. It contains everything needed to run a particular Windows program. Anyway, you'll see there's all sorts of stuff you could install. Let's look at uh, some of the apps here again. Various apps available with uh, all the installing stuff there for you. So um, various programs as you, you can see. And uh, we've also got, just to show you again, there's, there's also games here as well. Just have a look at that. And again, fairly long list of games. And as previously, if I just move this over a bit, you'll see some of these would require you to have the media, the DVD, whatever. Some you'd have to download yourself and then install the file. And from the installer, some it would actually do the download for you. So I'm not going to go try one of, one of these out because, again, you've seen me do that a couple of times now. It's the same sort of principle as under um, Play on Linux. It's just that it gives you another option. So the final program I want to look at here is called Crossover. If you go to the download section of the WineHQ website, you'll see a little bit of information about Crossover, effectively a paid version of Wine, a bit more polished, as they say. And if we click on the Crossover link, we go across to a website of Code Weavers who supply this uh, supported version of Wine as a commercial product. If we go to the Linux version there, uh, you will discover that although you can buy this thing, there is also a free trial, two-week trial. So I'm going to try the two-week trial. So I'll select that there, and now I have to go into various details and go through the install process. I'll do that, and I'll come back to you in a second. Right. I'm now back. I've got Crossover downloaded and installed. It did lots of updating and configuring, all that type of stuff. It's all now working fine as far as I know. And as you probably noticed, I've chosen to install this under my nice clean copy of Linux Mint. I didn't want to favor one distro over another. So I'm not doing this in, in Zorin. I could have done it in Zorin. I've just chosen not to. Anyway, here under Other, I should now find Crossover. So I'll run that up. And here it is with a nice big button saying Install Windows Software. And there we are. And we can browse available applications as we could under a Play on Linux and Wine Tricks. And uh, there we are eventually, it's told us what is available. And again, there is a massive great list of stuff, educational stuff, and there are games again, there's multimedia stuff. Lots and lots of programs are here. Although, as I have found, having had looked through this in some detail, there's lots and lots of things available, as there are under Wine Tricks and Plan Linux, until you actually want to install a particular thing you find useful, in which case it isn't there. I particularly want to install Lightwave, which is my main a 3D modeling package, and it isn't here. But I'm going to install it via the manual process, so I'll give it a name there, and I'll select an installer, which will be an installer file. And I've got that available sitting here in the download, so I'll pick that up. That's the installer for Lightwave 9.6, which is not the latest version, but it's the one I currently use. And as we select a bottle, this is effectively the, uh, I suppose the folder is the best place, but where it keeps all the information about this particular install, all the configuration, etc. I'm going to pick Windows 7 64 bit because I know it works under that. That's what I currently use it under. And I'll call this bottle. Lightwave, why not just to be uh, helpful? Now ask me where I want to put it, just do unlisted application, and I can now press on continue. So in series we'll install it, I can press on install, and we will see what happens. And this is looking promising, it's come up with the uh, setup wizard. I should say Lightwave is quite a complicated setup because it's got various things it has to install to make it work, so we'll see how we do. And uh, there we are. It seems to have survived the uh, fairly torturous installation process. It's even shown with a README file. This will run hopefully in uh, a demo mode because I won't be inputting all my key information. Um, Cinnamon has just crashed. Oh, that's good, isn't it? Um, do you want to restart Cinnamon? Well, I guess I've got uh, little choice. Let's see if we can 
close that down first. And uh, there we are, crossover has now got uh, that available. Um, I'm going to say, no, I'm not going to do that. Let's see if it actually has worked. So we've got different parts to uh, Lightwave. There's Modeler, which is where you create your models. Let's see if that works. And this is looking quite good, isn't it? This is, this is running Lightwave. I could uh, create myself maybe a box and there and there and uh, um, whiz around. That, that seems to have worked and I could do a... Um, oh, I'm back into Lightwave head now. Didn't expect to do that today. And uh, there we are. Let's just cut it up a bit maybe and pick up some polygons and uh, pick up those polygons there. And can we uh, just sort of stretch them out? Oh yes, this seems to be working. That's all right, isn't it? And uh, um, yes, this seems to be so far. We could sub patch it, make it really, really wild and wacky. Yes, this seems to be working. We've got Lightwave Modeler is working. And hopefully if we're really lucky, the layout program would work as well. This is the program you actually do your animation and stuff in. So um, here we are here. And again, is that working? Oh, it is. Yes, we've actually got a what seems to be a working package. Obviously, it would take you a while to check out this actually worked. But so far, so good. That seems to be a pretty impressive. So crossover seems to work. I don't know whether it adds things into the menus or not. Um, oh, it seems to have uh, completely reconfigured Linux Mint for me. That's not very nice, but is it? So basically, it's added a crossover menu. I see what it's done up there. Um, has it added this into a, a package anywhere? No, I'm just having a little think here. I'm thinking it out loud. Oh, there, oh, I see it's added Windows applications, New Tech and Lightwave, and that's down there. That's actually quite good, isn't it? So I don't particularly like the way the program decided to reconfigure how I use my operating system. But other than that, I'm quite impressed with the installation of Crossover. Now, I don't want to make this video as long as Ben-Hur or a typical Peter Jackson movie, but I do want to point out that using Wynance related programs isn't always as straightforward as we've seen so far. I've been testing these things out for about three days to make this video and I've had a, a lot of successes. Lightwave in particular has been good for me and Lightwave I found will work perfectly well even without crossover. Here it is running under standard uh, Wine sitting there and uh, here under Linux Mint. So that's working very well indeed, that's not a problem. But I have, for example, tried to install the Kindle Reader for PC under Linux, and I've tried to install it with Wine and with Play on Linux and with Wine Tricks and with Crossover, and they've all failed. And my general experience has been over three quite intense and frustrating days that some things work really well, some things work a little bit, and some things don't work at all. So please do take that as a final message. I've shown you in this video how to make things work, the basics of these packages. There's lots of different things you can twiddle with to make things work better, but sometimes they don't help you. Sometimes, at least in my experience of using Wine and its derivative programs, things simply don't work. Wine and its derivatives are amazing undertakings which can prove really useful. This said, they're not a panacea. They do not guarantee in any way that a particular Windows program will be able to be run on Linux, let alone run to its full capacity to be run as well as it would run on Windows itself. And therefore, whilst Wine is a fantastic thing to have in your armory, if, like me, you're thinking of transitioning entirely from Windows to Linux, they are not the, the total solution. You've got to investigate also with Linux programs which will do the job directly. Um, I, like many people here, I know from the comments you make, I'm caught in this what happens at the end of Windows 7 thing, um, which way am I going to go? I've already got one machine, my netbook running Linux, other things. I don't know quite what's going to happen. I will continue to investigate why and in, in its derivatives, they could be useful, but uh, I, I wasn't surprised to learn, and I have confirmed to myself in, in the course of making this video and doing the research for it, there isn't a perfect solution, at least at the moment, to running Windows programs on Linux. Anyway, that's now it for this time. I hope you've enjoyed the video. If so, please press the like button. If you haven't subscribed, please subscribe. And I hope to talk to you again very soon.